guys. It's been a minute. It has been a while since I've sat down. Excuse me, Cookie, I'm gonna have to throw you out if you keep making noises like that. Uh, if you haven't met Cookie, she is about nine or ten months old. She came as a Christmas present, didn't you? And I feel like she's just gonna continue to make make noise, but that's okay, that's what cats do, I suppose. All right, so the reason I'm here today is to put a cap on, uh, on a journey, a really interesting, really um, fun, cool journey that I've been on over the last two or three months. And that is my journey down my childhood. You know, down a rabbit hole um, that I have really, really enjoyed uh, recently. And, and basically what I've done over the last couple of months is treat myself. You know, I have a bit of retail therapy, but it's certainly not on just shit. Every single item that I've added to my collection of, of my greatest, most treasured childhood memories means something to me, and it means it's priceless. Every single item that I'm gonna show you today is absolutely priceless. And the fact that I've been able to find each item boxed in unopened condition just shows you know, what, what is available out there. I mean, half of these items, I, I couldn't even remember the name of them. All I remembered was like a, a, a picture or a, you know, a, a moment. Uh, maybe, you know, where I bought it. Uh, maybe, you know, taking it to school for the first time. Something like that. And each and every item I, I did a bit of research on and I, I came to the conclusion that it was out there. Um, I might have to pay for it a little bit higher than what I'd expect, but every single item that I wanted to find is out there on eBay. I was able to find it on eBay uh, from you know sellers in Australia, the UK, and America. So over the last two or three months, um, parcels have been coming in, and I'm really, really proud and happy to say that my collection is complete. So it's time for me to show you. It's time for me to bring to YouTube my childhood. I am 32 years of age. I was born on the 27th of November 1990. I just snuck in um, as a 90s kid and due to that fact um, a lot of these things came out between the ages of 6 to I'm gonna say 15. So from 6 to 15 every single thing that I'm about to show you was involved in some sort of amazing memory or period of time um, in my life and it got to the point where you know I, I am I going through a midlife crisis maybe um, I don't have the money to go and buy a boat or a jet ski or a fucking GTR as much as I'd love to but what I did have the money for is you know to put aside two or three thousand dollars to collect and hopefully keep for the remainder of my life just to you know whenever I want to look at it whenever I whenever I um whenever I want to reminisce I can because I've got everything here you know what I mean and I wanna I wanna somehow display it I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that but you know especially with my YouTube channel with creating videos like this sit down videos I'd love nothing more than to have this stuff displayed like behind me or or look I'm not sure all the, the first step was to acquire it and it took a while, you know, there's certain things that came from America that took five or six weeks to get here. So you can imagine how excited I was each and every time I got a package. But either way, all right, let's go in chronological order. I'm sharing my second cup of coffee with you guys. But yeah, okay, so let's go in chronolog chronological order. Right, the first thing that I remember vividly is one of these. And it's not just your average everyday Hot Wheels car. And this is one of the items that I simply could not remember. Could, I, I couldn't remember for the life of me what it was called. But uh, it, it, it indeed was called a Hot Wheels motorized XV racer. They've got a rechargeable motor inside, it says. Charges racer in just 10 seconds. So this, in 1996, my second year of primary school, this was the craze. This was the craze. If you had one of these and you could take it down to the bottom flat, which was this massive concrete pad, um, and you had one of these, I mean, you were the shit. And I got one. I got one. You know, I've got to give my parents credit. They never had a huge amount of money. But 
somehow, some way, I was able to, you know, get bought um, most of my my favourite things. So this is number one. This is 1996, completely boxed, um, and basically what it is is a little charging station. And then you've got, I think that takes three AA batteries. Then you've got the actual car. You stick the car on top. It's got, you know, some sort of metal um, connection there. You stick it on top for 10 seconds, take it off, and, and then it, 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 um, it zooms away. And uh, look, I wish that I could open this and use it, but I can't. Can you imagine how awesome this would be on an actual Hot Wheels track? You know, you're not just putting it up here and letting it go down um, through gravity. You're actually charging this up and, and firing it off, you know, around, uh, around a Hot Wheels track. I didn't have a Hot Wheels track, but I did have a big concrete pad. And this is, this is, you know, I, this is sick. But that's just the start. That is just the start, folks. So that's 1996. Following that, uh, we go to, well, we go to Pokemon. And Pokemon had a huge part of my life, huge piece of my heart, still remains with Pokemon. And the first thing that I had, as far as the Pokemon franchise is concerned, is the Game Boy. The Game Boy and the Game Boy game. So I had a, 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 a Game Boy Pocket. It was blue in colour. That is probably the only item that I actually haven't bought. Um, I did find one at a relatively reasonable price, but it was in the French, it, the box was in the French version. It was absolutely immaculate, um, you know, even under the, like, I've, I've, I've done a bit of research, you know, I've actually learned a few things, and like, things like uh, opening the battery case at the back of the Game Boy, and seeing if it's corroded or not, is, is a huge thing. This one was in absolutely mint condition, but the box was in French, and I thought, you know what, no, I'm going to put that money into buying the game that I had. My very first and only uh, Pokemon Game Boy game. And that is, my friends, and this is worth a, a, a small fortune, uh, Pokemon Blue. Pokemon Blue boxed in a, probably one of the most immaculate looking boxes you'll ever see. This, my friends, was, I'm going to say, 1998. And once again, a huge, huge, huge part of my life. I spent hours and hours and hours. I remember vividly, um, you know, I was up on a balcony up in, up in the top floor of my house and dad was downstairs outside uh, working in the garden. And this is one of my most vivid memories is I think I, I finally, I think I finally um, evolved War Turtle into Blastoise. I, I think that's like level 32 or something. And I'd spent hours and hours and hours trying to get that done. And I finally got it. And I remember opening up, opening up the window, just excited as hell, and yelled down to my dad, I got Blastoise! I got Blastoise! And, uh, you know, that meant absolutely nothing to him. But to him, I was happy. And, uh, and, and I guess it was well worth buying it for me, right? Now, I didn't have a box. I didn't have anything. I bought it secondhand. I bought the Game Boy with the game. And, uh, you know, this, this is next level. This is, this is easily worth four or five hundred bucks. Mint condition, I've got to get a box for it, but, um, but that would have to be in chronological order, the second, the second item for me. And uh, speaking of Pokemon, we're going to continue down that fashion, just for a little bit. The second thing I've got is a, an original, unopened, sealed Pokemon trading card game, two player starter set, the original. In each pack has a first edition holographic Machamp card. Um, and I vividly remember opening my own starter deck, taking out that Machamp card, and, and thinking it was the fucking shit, because it was. And lo and behold, 25 years later, I've got the exact same box, which is unbelievable to think, right? Sealed, perfect condition, and uh, that, my friends, is a really, really integral part of my childhood. Not only the Pokemon game, but also the Pokemon cards. And then there was stuff like Pokemon Snap for Nintendo 64, uh, Pokemon... What was it? Pokemon... Stadium? For Nintendo 64. So those two items I, I was looking at, 
but I didn't really have the, the vivid memories of those games that I do, um, you know, Pokemon Blue for Game Boy or uh, Pokemon Cards. So I've gone, I've gone straight to the top. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna muck around. I wanted to, if I'm gonna buy these things once and keep them forever, I want to make the right decision, right? So that is basically my Pokemon, my 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 Pokemon items. I mean, I could add to it quite easily, but I thought, no, you know what, I'm going to focus on those two. Uh, if I can get them in perfect condition, I'll be, I'll be more than happy. And lo and behold, I have. So I'll put that one, I'll put that one out there. Uh, next on the list is actually, believe it or not, a WCW toy. And this is another item that I couldn't for the life of me think of the name. Um, or I think I, I typed into Google Goldberg action figure with a massive head and it came back with a head ringer now I would not have remembered that but what I can remember is this guy this guy right here I had a Goldberg t-shirt back in the day I used to stay out at, uh, in the weekends with my gym uh, 12 o'clock midnight every Friday night we had WCW Nitro and it was fucking sick and my favorite wrestler from the get-go was always Goldberg and this particular figurine with the removable heavyweight uh, world championship belt, um, just the muscles, you know, I was eight years old, the ripped, the ripped, ripped to shred muscles. I, I didn't know how you'd get them, but I knew that Goldberg had them. And um, yeah, this was, this was another one that if I could find boxed, I was definitely going to get. And lo and behold, I have been able to find it boxed and I feel absolutely uh, blessed to have it and that brings back a huge amount of memories for me. Moving on. Skateboards. I consider myself, um, yeah, a bit of a skater back in the day. Did I land a few kickflips? Yep. Not much else though. Bit of, a couple of pop shove -its, um, a couple of acid drops off of like a, I don't know, meter and a half drop. I thought doing that at the local skate park was probably the pinnacle. A um, couple of board slides on a little, a little rail about that big. But either way, uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, obviously, I was going to buy the game, I didn't, but what I did buy is a tech deck, and at the peak of my interest in skateboards, these came out, tech decks, miniature skateboards, with the wheels and the, you know, the, 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 the wrench and the, 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 the little um, bushes and trucks and screwdriver and everything. But not only, like, I, I knew I was going to buy a tech deck, I wanted to get it sealed, but I didn't know that there was going to be a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater version. This was brought out in 1999. And uh, it's sealed, it's in pretty good condition. And the coolest thing that I didn't even realise at, at, at the start is that, up, like, um, behind the, the deck here is a little piece of paper, and it says there's a Pro Skater signature move inside inside this packet so you can imagine how excited you would have been back in the day to have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater playing on the PlayStation 1 you go and buy a tech deck you've got your tech deck ramps and shit you open it up you play with it and you've got a signature move that you can then use on the game I mean this this is fucking awesome and I had to get one and lo and behold I got a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater one um, which kind of makes up for both the PlayStation game and the tech deck so I'm super stoked with this one Another massive part of my childhood, tech decks, skateboarding in general, and uh, most certainly Tony Hawk and Tony Hawk Pro Skater. So, speaking of anime, and we are, you know, there's not too many um, things left. Speaking of anime, it went, well, for me, it went Pokemon, and then it went to... Dragon Ball Z, and then it went to Beyblades, and then I finished it off with Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, so we've done Pokemon, let's move to Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z, I'm going to say, was, because I was just that little bit older than I was when I um, had my Pokemon cards, the Dragon Ball Z cards and the ability to trade, and I went to markets literally every single weekend for like two years straight, I'd spend six hours there easily. With my folder of Dragon Ball Z cards, looking through other other stall holders, looking through other you know kids um, collections and trading and trying to add to my collection and 
Fuck man, by the end of it, by like t two years in, I had a pretty sick Dragon Ball Z uh, collection. But I never owned an ultra rare. And that's something that I've been looking for. Um, I was almost about to pay a thousand dollars US for a Goku, the, uh, sorry, the Go Goku level five personality ultra rare from the Cell Saga. I was almost, sorry, in a PSA eight. Um, I was almost about to splash out on that. I, I decided not to, and I decided to distribute that thousand dollars um, into a collection of, of other Dragon Ball Z cards. It, you know, the cards that I had, um, you know, I never had that ultra rare, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to leave that. But what I am going to buy are things that I, I have had in the past. And we started off with the Saiyan Saga. Of course. Is there really any other way? So what you have here is an unopened Saiyan Saga uh, villain starter deck. And I'm going to put that there. Following that, we have the Freezer Saga, which only came out in booster packs. But I haven't just bought a booster pack. I've actually bought a sealed um, Freezer Saga booster pack in one of these power-up um, blister packs. So, as soon as I saw this, I, I, I can't actually remember seeing these on the shelves. And looking at the date, it was 2002. So I feel like these... I feel like these came out after the conclusion of the World Games Saga. They came out as like a, well, a power-up pack. Um, I never had it in this form, but uh, I knew I wanted to get something from the Freezer Saga, and, and lo and behold, I did. So that one, my friends, is a pretty epic addition. Following that, as we all know, and by the way, Freezer Saga, Freezer Saga means the most to me because I remember, I vividly remember, <laughs> Um, that battle between Goku and Frieza, right? That I, I, I remember. I had to wait about three weeks worth of episodes to finally see Goku go Super Saiyan. All right, you were there, I was there. We all remember that, right? I think I, I did read a statistic recently that that was the, like the longest battle in anime history. I think it went for like I don't know, 20 episodes or something. So I, I vividly remember that. I used to go back to my grandparents' house after school sometimes, um, catch an episode of Dragon Ball Z, and uh, yeah, the Freezer Saga, and also, I'm going to say also the uh, Cell, the Cell Saga was the one that, you know, mean, meant the most to me, and the one that I've got the most memories around, but Saiyan Saga, Freezer Saga, what's next, Trunks Saga, well, I was able to come up with a unopened, sealed uh, Trunks Saga villain starter deck. And this was the most expensive of the lot. And uh, there's a reason for that, because there's not many out there. There's more. There's a huge amount of Saiyan Saga uh, starter decks out there, but not so many um, trunks. So I've got that. Following that, we went to the Android Saga. And luckily, luckily enough, I was able to find one of those power-up packs for a, uh, an Android Saga uh, booster pack. So... What have we got? Saiyan, Freezer, Trunks, Android, and like I said, you know, my fandom with um, Dragon Ball Z sort of faded after the World Game Saga. Um, but probably, you know, after the Freezer Saga, the one that means the most to me was definitely the Cell Saga, and so I couldn't go past getting myself a, a Cell Saga uh, villain starter deck. Now, I would have got Hero in all of them, but the Hero starter decks, for whatever reason, cost just that little bit more. So, this is, my friends, my complete Dragon Ball Z trading card game, or collectible card game, um, collection. And I'm super proud of it, and everything's unopened, and, you know, the good thing about all this stuff is that if I become, you know, sick of it, if I really want to move, if, if, if I really want to leave my childhood behind, I'll get rid of it and I'll sell it again back on eBay and you know I might have to wait a few weeks but I'll most likely get my money back and that was important to me I didn't want to buy shit I wanted to buy good stuff good quality stuff boxed great condition and to be honest for a collector the prices are only going to go up so that is my Dragon Ball Z collection Dragon Ball Z meant the fucking world to me I look literally um, I can't even explain it 
how much it meant to me. And uh, I don't know whether kids these days will ever be affected, you know, because we had such limited um, supply of, of anime and, and games and, and, you know, channels to watch. Um, because we had, you know, the internet wasn't even out then. Well, the internet came out, I remember, I remember collecting 10 booster pack wrappers uh, and sending them in uh, to America from New Zealand, from little old New Zealand. I sent them in, I collected them. It took me a while. I think we had uh, Capsule Corp points and you had to get a certain amount. Each booster pack gave you a certain amount. We sent them in and get, uh, got a uh, promotional card back, a two star. So I can't remember what the card was, but fuck it was sick. I mean, you think I'm excited getting this stuff in the mail to get a promotional card back after collecting booster pack wrappers for weeks and sending them away. Ah, oh, just amazing. But that's not all. That is not all. We talk about particular toys, what they meant to me at certain times. This toy was my only ever Dragon Ball Z um, action figure. And it must have been around the time that the Android Saga came out. I had this in my you know, toy collection for years. For years. I think I got this one when I was about 10 years old. I was on a rugby trip. My dad came along for the rugby trip. He wasn't a coach, but he was a parent. He came along to help. And after the game, we went out, me and him, and we went to the warehouse, which is basically like your Big W or your uh, Walmart. And we went to the warehouse and basically, I mean, I played a decent game. I think I actually kicked the... I kicked the, I was the kicker for the team at the point, at that point, at age like 10 or 11. And um, yeah, we went away from, to Wellington, we, we, we won the game. No, sorry, we, we drew the game. We drew the game, and it was my kick that drew the game. And, you know, I, I always used to hit him up when I played rugby for a, a dollar per try or a dollar per kick. And, and uh, you know, I'd have my dad and my, and my uncle, my auntie and my mum and everyone on board. So if I got a try, you know, I'd get four bucks. And uh, anyway, on this particular day, I didn't get any money. I just wanted a toy. And so we went to the warehouse and this is the toy that I chose. And I'll always remember it. I know the exact place I got it. Um, I know the exact place uh, that I had it in my room. And I vividly remember, you know, he's got a hat, he's got Dragon Balls, there's a medallion. And um, unfortunately, I'll never take this out of the packet. But this toy, guys, this toy means the fucking world to me. Not only because I loved Dragon Ball Z, but also because my dad bought it for me. All right? And it's those type of memories that I really want to grasp onto. The older I get, uh, the more I appreciate things like that. So, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stand this up. Let's try. Alright, okay, so that is my complete Dragon Ball Z collection. And uh, like I mentioned before, you know, I was... I was, uh, I was getting into... Geez, I was getting into sport. I was always into sport, but sport sort of took priority and really trying to be good at sport and perform at sport took priority over like cartoons and shit like that. Um, so, you know, my interest in anime and in toys and stuff like that at age like, I don't know, 13 or 14 sort of tapered out. There was, there was one other uh, anime that I enjoyed, which was Yu-Gi-Oh! And I did my very best to find a reasonably, a reasonably priced Yugi original starter deck, unopened. But unfortunately, I was going to have to drop at least eight or nine hundred dollars to get one of those. Now that would have that would have completed my collection, my collection of cards, right? Unfortunately, I don't have one yet, and I don't think I will get one. Uh, they're just too expensive, but it was the Yugi deck. I got Dark Magician. I got all of those things. That was my first starter deck, and I went. I actually played that game. I went to the fucking arcade each and every weekend with my mate, my mate Tim, and we actually played the game, and it was fucking fun. Like, there's a lot of st strategy to it, and 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 uh, I really enjoyed it. I did. And the only reason I stopped playing is because I went to high school, finally, and at, at about age 14, I took my entire deck to school. Um, by that point, you know, it was getting phased out and I was I probably wasn't that cool um, at the time to be still playing Yu-Gi-Oh, but I really enjoyed it and Unfortunately on one particular day my whole entire deck got stolen and that was the end of that for me. So 
prior to Yu-Gi-Oh, prior to Yu-Gi-Oh, and uh, most probably, you know, basically at the same, t well, between Pokemon and, and Dragon Ball Z, but more so around the Dragon Ball Z time, came out a, uh, a program called uh, Beyblades. And Beyblades were, was a sick program, right? Po we loved Pokemon because we, we imagined one day we could actually be a Pokemon trainer. We loved Dragon Ball Z because, well, they were just epic characters. But the main reason why I loved Beyblades is because you could literally battle real life Beyblades. I mean, go to the warehouse and pick up a Beyblade, right? And you could actually battle, just like they did on the program. And so that's why I loved it. And everyone else loved it. And I remember we used to make, you know, for those who couldn't afford them, uh, we used to make Beyblades out of bottle tops, a pencil, and a piece of string. Don't ask me to do it now, but I vividly remember that. We had, we had school desks that, that flipped up like that, which meant that if you took everything out of your desk, you had like a battle zone. And we, we made our own Beyblades out of, like I said, bottle tops, and we fucking battled them away. But the lucky ones actually got real Beyblades. And uh, the one Beyblade that I got, and the one that I vividly remember, and when I thought about picking up um, a Beyblade from eBay, boxed hopefully, it was this Beyblade. It took me fucking ages to find the name of it. I had to, I had to write in green Beyblade, green original Beyblade. I finally found out the, uh, the manufacturer back then was Hasbro, so I had to write in Hasbro green original Beyblade. And I finally came across a certain Beyblade called Master Drasil. Master Drasil. And uh, it was green. And as soon as I saw it, as soon as I saw a picture of it, like, I just had this massive smile on my face because that was it. That was the one. That's the one that I had. And I found boxes. I found, you know, used ones. I found opened ones. It took me a while, but eventually I did find, in its original condition, I'm going to say the best condition possible. The best condition boxed Hasbro Beyblade of Master Drasil you will ever find in your entire life. I felt like the luckiest guy on earth when I found this. And it is indeed this. This pack right here. I don't even know they came out in double packs, but apparently they do. Um, when I saw that it had this one in it, I thought, right, I'm gonna have to do some thinking here, what am I gonna do? Do I, do I pay, you know, two or three times the price um, because it's boxed and because it's got another one in there? Do I just bite the bullet and buy it? Because, I mean, this is the one that means the most to me, and I thought, I, I, you know, I slept on it for a few nights and I thought, fuck it, I'll buy it. So what I have here, guys, is an unopened, never seen the light of day, um, double pack of uh, Master Gisele, and this one, is called, I actually don't know, I, I, I think, uh, what is it, uh, C, Seaborg, Seaborg. This one doesn't really mean much to me, but it would mean something to someone else out there. It's boxed, it's unopened, and it's in mint condition because it's been in this, this plastic cover its entire uh, life. But yeah, Beyblades was awesome. I fucking loved it. Um, I love the fact that you could battle yourself. And I looked, you know, Beyblades, it's still, it's still popular. The thing is, all of these things are still popular. They stuck around. And they stuck around for a reason. Because they're sick. And they're all colourful. I mean, look at this. Like, it's, it, everything's colourful, everything's bright, um, you know, well marketed. And they got me on board. So, this is the final thing, the final piece of the puzzle. Eventually, I think I probably will take this one out. Uh, put it in some sort of acrylic case and I might flick this one on uh, because you know it's a bit bulky it's hard to display but for now guys this is it this is my complete collection of, uh, of items and I'm gonna try my best to get some sort of thumbnail right now because you know I want you guys to click on this I realize not a lot of you are gonna watch the whole thing but you know, with that being said, um, I wouldn't expect you to. This is my childhood, and it was about time I connected with it again. You know, I'm super, super stoked to say that I have indeed uh, reconnected with my, my childhood, well and truly. And we move on, you know, it's going to allow me to move on into adulthood with 
without those memories, without those longing memories, you know, those thoughts of, fuck, uh, do I have any regrets as a kid? You know, what was I like as a kid? I can, whenever I want to go down memory lane, all I have to do is open up this box of goodies and have a look. So, like I said at the start, well, like I said before, I need to get a thumbnail, so we'll do that now. And, um, yeah, like I said, uh, well, what did I say? Oh my, sorry, I just got transported to a new, uh, another, another dimension back in 1998 or 1996 or 2000. And, oh, this stuff is just so awesome. And, you know, I've never really been a collector. I've never really been willing to, to, to put the money into, into collecting anything, but this is not just any collection. This is, this is me, this is my childhood, and um, I'm super, super happy to have shared it with you. So, thank you for being here, guys. Um, it was my pleasure to take you down memory lane. And have a fantastic day. I'll see you soon.